Coming up on How We Built It, we kick off a new series to learn from early adopters of Azure Synapse, starting with global aviation tech company GE Aviation, who are evaluating Azure Synapse to drive the development of predictive maintenance analytics at scale to help airlines and the industry overall get ahead of issues and optimize flight safety and operational efficiency. So today I'm joined by Luke Bowman, a senior product manager at GE Aviation's Digital Group, joining us today from Austin, Texas. Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Thanks for having me on the show. And by the way, if you're watching and new to Azure Synapse, it's Microsoft's limitless analytics platform that really brings together enterprise data warehousing and big data processing into a single service, removing the traditional constraints for analyzing data of all shapes and sizes. And you can learn more by watching our introduction to Azure Synapse at aka.ms slash mechanics synapse. Now, GE Aviation, if you didn't know, specializes in designing leading edge tech and digital solutions for the aviation industry. So everything from specialized military engines to the world's most powerful engine ever produced for a commercial aircraft. So Luke, your team just evaluated Azure Synapse really as part of the next generation data and analytics platform for GE Aviation's digital group. What's behind this? Yeah, so for the past 20 years beyond building the tech, GE Aviation's digital group specializes in providing analytics for airlines and others in the industry with a focus on safety analytics. As you can see here, we have a data enabling layer called Data Actuator, which we built off of our flight data processing platform called EMS. EMS currently is used by dozens of the world's largest airlines to decode and transform flight data recorded by sensors on planes and provide analytics for safety, efficiency, and maintenance purposes. So as part of our architecture, we have a server for ingesting data, and for each flight, we're capturing uh, the raw time series data for the entire flight from as many as 350,000 data parameters on the plane. We combine the data with other sources in an airline, such as aircraft type, flight plans, and other operational data, as well as sources like forecasted and actual weather, runway and airport data, and all this is stored in Azure Blob Storage and SQL. So after we ingest the data, it runs through our compute layer, which is called the distributed processing system, where we run analytics over the data set using a library of over 10,000 predefined aviation analytics that we've created over the past 20 years or so for the detection of abnormal events through all phases of flight. And we can scale this processing horizontally as needed. Each customer then has their own remote desktop client to access the analytics and they can also access APIs to visualize the events in dashboards or create other visualizations to make data-driven decisions around their operations. And as we migrate to Azure, we're running our instances of EMS for customers in Azure IaaS. So how do things change then with Azure Synapse being utilized here? Yeah, so now with Synapse, we're able to pull our entire ecosystem of data from EMS via REST API into Synapse as a central location to build analytics on that data at scale. We can use our Spark clusters on Azure as our big data engine for compute and analytics, and then we can explore data in the lake without being restricted by predefined schemas and query directly over parquet files in the lake using our existing skills in T-SQL. Then from there, we can output the resulting data sets into our data warehouse and visualize the results in Power BI, all from a single managed environment. So can you walk through then the process that you took with Azure Synapse? Yeah, so our first proof of concept took a set of analytic models developed to produce condition indicators for an aircraft's pneumatic system and ran these models against a sample set of flight records. Here you can see the Synapse workspace. First, we created a pipeline in Synapse in the Orchestrate tab and to load the flight records that have been decoded by EMS. Using a standard copy data connector, I'm able to retrieve all of the flight data, which is transformed into a parquet file and stored in Azure Data Lake storage. Great, so now the data, I think it's it's in, it's ready to explore, but where do you go from here? Right, so once the data is in the parquet format and loaded in the data lake, it's easy to run our Python analytics on it. In the develop tab, we pointed to our existing pneumatic analytics against the data, and we provided some additional environment information necessary to run the analytic, and then we submit the job to the Spark pool for processing. All right, so I can see the Spark pool and the Spark job here, but what's that doing exactly? Yeah, so the Spark job generates about a dozen or so condition indicators. You can think of these as floating point aggregate results where we've measured various aspects of the time series flight data. 
This model in particular is looking for parameters relevant to the pneumatic system, which controls airflow to and from the engines for other equipment in the airplane. These results are output as a separate Parquet file and persisted back to the Azure Data Lake storage so that we can now run analytics on top of those results as well. And then we have a third notebook written in Scala to load the results into the SQL data pool. This then does some reshaping of the data and it splits out the data into one fact table per condition indicator. We create a couple of dimension tables that help us describe the aircraft associated with each of these condition indicators, like the fleet of the aircraft and the aircraft ID. And now when we execute the code, it writes directly to our SQL pool and query and visualize the data using Power BI. Power BI allows us to do faster and more performant dashboard reporting. Now you're able to actually visualize and kind of predict uh, potential maintenance issues then with the aircraft's pneumatic system. Yeah, so before we never had any way to do this end-to-end -end process without multiple steps in different environments. Here we're able to query and visualize the data using Power BI. The top graph here shows aggregated results for one of those condition indicators. So analysts can then hone in on all of these spikes and do more drill down analysis as to why the spikes are occurring and what corrective maintenance activity may need to be taken. Everywhere you see a spike indicates a particular high pressure valve not being fully closed during the cruise phase of flight, which may potentially need to be replaced. So you touched on earlier the capabilities also related to your data schema and the things that you did to develop that in Synapse, but how does that change things? Yeah, so we can now use Azure Synapse to build new models in the predictive maintenance space, but also in other spaces like safety and efficiency where we have products. We're opening up Azure Synapse to our data scientists so that they can directly work on the, on the data that we have. Uh, we plan to open up this tool set to our team of data scientists over the next couple of months. This is really great. Thank you so much, Luke, for joining us and really sharing your Azure Synapse evaluation with us today. And if you liked hearing from GE Aviation, please check out the rest of our How We Built It series at aka.ms slash Azure Synapse series to learn from our early adopters. Thanks for watching.